So we only talked about information in an abstract way this far. But what Francis Crick did in addition to determining the DNA structure, that a few years later they were also able to crack the genetic code, that is find out what base pairs correspond to what amino acids. And present this small table that you've likely seen. So DNA is special, well, RNA in this case is special, that you have triplets of base pairs, and each triplet of base pair will code for a particular amino acid, or indicate the start of a gene or the stop of a gene. Since we have four different possible bases in each position, that means four by four by four equals 64 possibilities. So this is more, you could argue that it's more information than we need, but what nature has used that for in evolution is apparently that some amino acids are coded for by many combinations here. And even if you were to completely randomly assemble base pairs, it's going to create more abundance of some amino acids than others. And interestingly enough, the natural abundance of amino acids corresponds quite closely to this. In a particular cell or something, they might deviate from this. But on average, the amount of a different amino acids we have in nature corresponds quite closely to pure mathematics and the likelihood of the number of bases that are co the number of base compare combinations that code for that particular amino acid. The other part the genetic code does is that at least for simple organisms it's going to instruct things where you start to encode for a protein and where we stop encoding for a protein. And the way that is done is that you're having proteins that are binding to DNA and are recognizing a start codon and then we start encoding and, tran and uh, transcribing this protein until we hit the stop codon and that's where we release and release the messenger RNA and we have a finished protein. So this genetic code is super important. Uh, we use it in many ways. Uh, you also saw that in certain cases we might deliberately want to change this. Uh, the 20, sorry, that um, for instance with the pseudouridine code, but that doesn't really change the amino acid contents. In some cases though, there can be deviations from this uh, because there are more than 20 amino acids in nature. It's just the amino acids that are used to build our cells. There are a handful of organisms that for various reasons have special one special amino acid, but they don't have more amino acids in that case. It's just that due to the way their transfer RNA and everything works, they might occasionally have replaced an amino acid for something else. So this genetic code is universally valid, although there, as always, there tends to be rare exceptions in biology.